But um, in order to develop a regime for, for space resource utilisation, as before, it's not just a question of looking at the law. You need yeah. to consider economic, national security and technology issues as well. And those economic issues, on the one hand, you want to reward yes. risk and innovation. If you're going to go out there as a commercial entity and get involved in mining, then it's going to yeah. Re yeah, yeah. use a whole lot of capital. Yeah. Um, and you ought to get some reward for that. That's right, yeah. So, uh, Which directly then affects this, right? Yes. You know how that plays out, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, can you, ex this is this, yeah. th before we discussed, is, are certain parts of outer space excludable, as in you can exclude others from the use of it? Um, is your use of a certain area on the moon, for example, subtractable in the sense that if you use it, then other people can't use yeah, it yeah, okay. or other All states right. can't use it. But if I use it and you can use it, then great. It's not subtractable then. And that's right. a good argument for it, right? Right, right. Okay. right. But as I understand it, uh, yeah. you know, there are certain areas on the moon that have all the that's... right conditions. They have access to water. They have access to power from the sun. That's right. Um, and, and maybe good temperature as well. And that's an interesting point, right? Because you could say, all right, oh, well, we're only going to take this ice, but there's ice everywhere. We're not taking all that, but not all places are the same. No. Same as not all asteroids have the same composition. So you can't just say, we're using this asteroid, go use a lot of others. Well, no, our asteroid only takes a day to get there. You want one that takes two years to get there. It's right. not the same, right? No. No. So that becomes quite a big thing, as you said, in economic and technology and mission planning on all that sort of stuff. Yes, yes. Um, it, it, it's potentially a huge industry and the industry would involve some infrastructure, if yeah. you like. Oh, yeah. So the infrastructure in respect of space mining would involve big rockets to get things there and, and potentially back again. Yep. Uh, maybe a whole industry in, in lunar orbit and Earth orbits itself. Who owns that infrastructure? Yeah, and this is going to be my question, right? If, if you start digging it out, you don't own that rock. Could I take it from you? Well, that's that's a good question, and it's part of the reason why you want some certainty. You want some certainty about the reward that yeah, you're going yeah. to get. Yeah. Um, so so you know it, it might be easy for some some states to point to the non-appropriation principle and say you can't own it. But then if that's what you say, then how do you encourage? <laughs> yeah the development of this industry at all. Yeah, you go spend two billion dollars, go dig it out, and then, you know, another country's going to go scoop it from you. There, yes. That just won't make economic sense for the company to do it. No, yeah. no, exactly. Uh, and uh, so quite often uh, accounts of what's out there yeah. say that there's a huge trillions of dollars of, of, of resources out there. Yeah. But that doesn't take into account the economics of oversupply. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you bring it back to Earth and, and you bring back tons and tons, what's that going to do yeah, to the yeah. market on Earth? Th that is not the same in terms of economic scenario. That's right. No. You know, a thousand dollars won't say a thousand dollars if there's now a hundred thousand times of it. Yes. Yeah. And then how does that feed into the reward and risk, yes. which then affects then, I guess, how much you would need to extract, which then affects how much can you share around in royalty. So yeah, yes. you're getting into a vicious circle right now. Complicated, complicated. And then there's the national security issues. Well, we already talked about competition yep. for the closest yeah, yeah, yeah. asteroid or, or for the best site. On yeah, the yeah, exactly. Um, there's also, you, want, you might want security of your site. Yeah. So you might be concerned that notwithstanding the law says that you own what you extract, could somebody else take it even in spite of the law? Yeah. Um, and if you're going to have security of the site, then that uh, go yeah. intersects <laughs> with other laws about, you know, what you're allowed to do on the moon and what you're yes. not allowed to do on the moon. You can't have military fortifications. But then how do you have security of your site yeah. if, if you can't have military fortifications? Um, dual use uh, as well can, is an issue here, just as it is in a lot of other uh, circumstances. If you're developing technology for space mining, could that technology be used for other purposes? Yeah, exactly. So uh, as I understand it, you might want to um, use lasers, for example, to, to, uh, to extract water yeah. from, from the, uh, the lunar regolith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, and, and you want transparency about what states are doing up there. So you want some space domain awareness. Yep. You might want some satellites in orbit that are in lunar orbit yeah, yeah, yeah. that are looking down on the moon and looking at what's happening on right. the moon. So there's those national security issues. Then there's technology issues. How do you do the extraction? Do we have the technology for that? How do we do the processing? And do we have the technology for that? How do we transport it if we're going to bring it back to Earth or uh, use it somewhere else? Um, or, or do we not bring it back to Earth? Yeah, do, exactly. do we use it in Earth orbit, for example? And, and again, you know, as you said, this directly affects what these may determine or what these determine that could do. Yeah, you can't just say we're only ever going to use it on the moon or an asteroid because mm. that may not be the case. That's right. That's right. And then there's the avoidance of debris yeah. and not just in orbit, but debris on, on the lunar surface or on an asteroid as well. And that goes back to, I guess, the part of the Outer Space Treaty where you're supposed to do due regard, right? Yes. So are you going to create harmful situations that pose damage or risk to that. And it may not even be as, as overt as people think. You know, we already know there's higher rates of silicosis from the fine moon dirt. So if there are people on the moon and you're throwing up a whole bunch of stuff or mm. on an asteroid, are you then creating environmental health problems that it's clearly not right. due regard, right? right? It's not just a, oh, you're not blowing up their piece of land. There's probably a lot of other subtleties there that are Absolutely. Absolutely. really tricky. So in, in both cases, the space traffic managers, management and the space resource utilisation, this is kind of a snapshot of the challenges in terms of the current legal regime and in developing the le legal regime further. I, we can't cover every issue, but this is a snapshot. And, and I think this is the important emphasis you said. This is a snapshot. And I think it just goes to show how big and important it is. And it's not just a... Again, I think people think saying, here's the technology, here's the law, here's the economics. They, as you showed here very well, they feed off each other. And mm. you just can't say you do that, so you do this, so you do that. That is not how it works.